Hey guys, about a year ago, we took a look at a Docker container, an inventory management Docker container called Snipe It. Now Snipe It's great, it is very robust, it is very in depth, it is a lot to comprehend. And luckily the other day I was scrolling through Reddit and if we jump over here, uh, we can see uh, that this post uh, called Homebox, uh, Home Organizer Beta Release uh, popped up on my newsfeed. And uh, I took a look at it and I really, really like it. And I wanna show it to you today in this video. But first, we've got some bills to pay, so here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. I've always been someone who's interested in learning as much as I can about whatever topic interests me at the time. I've even started learning to play bass guitar again because it's something I did in my younger years and I've missed what playing music does to my brain. So when I'm not working on YouTube videos and my hands hurt too much from playing bass, I still wanna keep my mind active, so I turn to brilliant.org. Lately, I've been going back and refreshing myself on algebra concepts, as I've always liked math and numbers, so it's nice to go back and relearn old concepts to keep my brain sharp. Now, we all know that hands-on learning is the best way to learn anything. In the algebra courses, they use visuals and concepts to help understand why the answer is what it is. And understanding why something is the way it is helps understand a broader concept in whatever it is you're trying to learn. And if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance that you've got an interest in ongoing education. Luckily, Brilliant has thousands of courses covering a wide range of topics with new material being added each month. To get started, head over to brilliant.org slash dbtech or click the link in the description to get started. And the first 200 people to do that will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So here is Homebox, we're logged in. We can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. Uh, it's very basic and it's very, it's very basic and I appreciate that. Uh, going back and looking at, at Snipe It, there's just so many different fields and forms and, and, and statuses and all that kind of different stuff. And that's, that's too much for me. It, 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 it just is, sometimes I just wanna keep tabs of what I've got, not who has it, where was it checked out to. I don't, I don't necessarily need all of that extra data. And if we go into here, again, here we are logged into Homebox. Um, and I've just, I've just got a few items in here. They're all in my office because I was, you know, putting some stuff together and I was just looking at stuff here on my desk. And uh, so if we come into here, we can see the office, uh, the detailed view, we can turn detailed view to on and off with more, uh, as far as getting more information, as far as description, location name, when it was created, when it was updated, the database ID, you know, if you don't want to see all that, you can, you can just disable it and just get the simplified view of what you've got going on there. Below this, I've got, uh, you know, just three items here. I've got uh, two monitors and my, my laser master uh, that's behind me. Uh, so if we open this up, here we can see uh, all of the different information about this LG 4K monitor. Uh, you know, it's the screen on the right side of my setup right over here. And the serial number I didn't put in because I didn't want to look for it. Uh, the model number, the manufacturer, is it insured? Additional notes, attachments, you can add images to this if you wanted to. Uh, purchase details, where did I purchase it from? What, uh, how much did I purchase it for? When did I purchase it? The warranty information, uh, when does the warranty expire? That sort of thing. And then down here, there is an option for sold details. So if you had it and then you sold it, you could keep tabs on uh, who you sold it to and their information, uh, that sort of thing, if you wanted to do that. And in fact, if we come in here and click edit, uh, here we can see again, simplified view on or off. Uh, let's just, let's turn that off. But so again, location is office. You can change where that is. Let's say you rearrange your house and you move an item from one location to another. You can move it from one location to another in here as well. Uh, and of course you can add additional locations, modify. These were the default locations that were built into the system when the container was deployed. So uh, you may want to uh, probably, we'll have to modify this a little bit. Uh, you can add labels to this as far as like electronics. That makes sense. Um, and then, uh, no, I think that's fine. So then again, name, LG 4K monitor, quantity one, description. Again, it's the right side of my setup here. Serial number, if I wanted to put that in, uh, model number, manufacturer notes. Is it insured? Yes or no. Again, images, if you wanted to upload an image uh, so that you can, you know, for insurance purposes, maybe, you just want to throw an image up here, up here as far as what it looks like. And then of course, more information as far as the purchase details, uh, warranty details, and uh, and then again, like I said, sold information, like who did you sell it to for how much, that sort of thing. So it's very, very user friendly. Um, so let's go back to our homepage here. Let's click on home. Again, we've got our locations of attic, bedroom, living room, basement, garage, office, bathroom, kitchen. Of course, you may have two or three bedrooms. You may have a den instead of an office. You may have you know, any number of different things where you can uh, go in here and change some of this stuff. 
Um, you know, we've got uh, different tags down here, different labels, I guess they call them. Uh, you can import a CSV file if you had a, a list of all of the items in your house that you wanted to keep tabs of in here. You would, of course, need to make sure that the headers for that list match uh, what would be uh, what would be uh, associated for in here. Uh, we've got our profile for our um, for our user profile again: name, email address, uh, password. You can generate an invite link if you wanted to invite other members of your home to this. Uh, currency format, uh, theme settings. Ooh, let's 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 do night mode. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Um, and then. Uh, of course, we can go down here and click delete if we wanted to delete our account for some reason. Hey guys, at any point during this video, if you find this video helpful or informative or whatever, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content like this, definitely get subscribed. I'm trying to release at least a couple of videos a week and uh, it would be very cool if you wanted to uh, check those videos out again by hitting the subscribe button down below. So here we are back on our homepage again in night mode that we just swapped out. And I'm gonna click on create right up here at the top. We've got items and assets, locations and labels. So let's look at items items first. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is select where is that item located in your home, your office, wherever. Um, we're going to say, we're just going to say office. Uh, item name, uh, let's, let's say um, Audio uh, Technica AT2020. That's the microphone I'm using right now. Uh, item description is a uh, microphone. Uh, labels, uh, we could do um, electronics, I suppose, general maybe. Um, and then we can click on create. And now we've got our item created. And of course, if we come back to our homepage, uh, we can see that we've got four items in here. In our office, we've got four items. Um, and of course, if we open that up. Let's refresh. There it is. And here we can see we've got our Audio Technica AT2020 with some tags, with some tags up here. So you kind of get the idea of how that works. Of course, if we wanted to click create and add a label or a label, a location. So I was looking at labels in that list there. We could say, so here we've got create location. So I'm gonna do, let's just do um, front yard, right? Um, and then we'll click on create. Uh, and then we're gonna go to create again. We're gonna say item location uh, is front yard. We're gonna call it uh, hammock. Oops, swing. Item description is, is exactly that. And then create. Um, so then if we come back to home and go to front yard, we can open up this hammock swing and then edit it to have more information about what it was or what it is, where you got it, how much you paid for it, things like that. So it's very, very easy to administer. Also, I just wanted to mention that uh, this is my job. Making YouTube videos is my job. It's how I get paid. It's how I pay my bills. So uh, I do have to unfortunately add ads to this, the baked in ads that are from sponsors, the YouTube ads from obviously from YouTube. But if you're not interested in seeing those and you'd like to have access to my content completely ad free, uh, head over to Patreon or dbtech.fans where you can get access to my content with no ads, no baked in ads, no sponsored ads, uh, no YouTube ads, no ads whatsoever uh, for really just as little as $1 a month if you're interested in doing that. Again, links to everything will be in the description down below if you'd like to support the channel that way. So what I love even more, if I'm being completely honest, about how simple it is to administer Homebox is actually how easy it is to install it. So let's go over and take a look at getting Homebox installed via Portainer. So if we jump over to the Homebox uh, docs over here on GitHub, uh, we can see that there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. Uh, the first one is just running a Docker, uh, a Docker run command, um, of course, I like to, whenever I can, use a Docker Compose, and we can see that uh, right down here below here. So we've got a, a version 3.4 Docker Compose. Our service is Homebox. Uh, here we can see the image that we're using is from the GitHub repository of Haycott slash uh, Homebox latest tag to make sure you've always got the most current version of the Docker container. Below that, we've got a container name of Homebox, a restart policy of, of always, which means if your server reboots, something crashes, whatever, it will make every attempt that it can to restart the container without any intervention. Uh, you could change that to, uh, you know, unless stopped or whatever, but I think always is probably a good option for, uh, uh, for a container like this. Uh, below that, we've got some environment variables. We've got um, log level of info. Our log format will be a text file. Um, we can, uh, we've can. we got a web max upload size. This is in megabytes, and it's currently set to 10 megabytes by default. Um, and of course, there's more information below this we'll get to where you can adjust some of these. Um, below that, we've got volumes of homebox-data. Uh, that is uh, also declared down here at the bottom. And then we've got some ports of, uh, it's 
map here at 3100 on the on the host side to 7745 on the on the container side. So uh, we've got uh, we've got those there. We can change this 3100 if we want to. And in fact, like I said, there's a bunch of different stuff down here uh, that we can add to this, including um, you know if you wanted to be able to have like password recovery and things like that uh, using uh, an SMTP server, you can absolutely add these uh, different options here uh, into the environment variable section of your Docker Compose um, and and get some more functionality out of it. And in this case, uh, specifically uh, a mail server, so that again, you can get notifications, password resets and things like that. Um, and I think that kind of covers uh, everything that we really need to cover here. Of course, again, all of this will be linked in the description down below. Um, and then of course, all we've got to do is take uh, this information right here, jump over to Portainer, go to Stacks, create a new stack. Of course, I've already got one created here, uh, which we can see is right here. I haven't modified it at all from how it was over on their documents page. Um, but then once you deploy this, it'll take it a couple of minutes to download uh, the, the files that it needs, the, the image that it needs, um, and then build the, the container itself. So once you've once you've clicked on deploy the stack down here, mine says update the stack, but yours will say deploy the stack. Once that's been deployed and you can see that Homebox is running, uh, you should be able to come over here and click on the ports right there. And this is what you're gonna see. Uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of the default login page and you're just going to register a new account uh, and go ahead and put in all of your information here, click register, and then you can log in and start, uh, you know, kind of building out your asset rep uh, repository with all of your inventory items, things like that. So that's how easy it is to not only administer Homebox, but also get it deployed on a Docker server. Uh, you may have noticed earlier in this video that I am actually using this on a URL, I'm using it at inventory.dbtech.com uh, and I'm using Cloudflare tunnels for that. Um, and there was no special configuration. There was nothing additional that I needed to do other than of course having um, a Cloudflare account with uh, with Teams or, or Zero Trust set up and an agent on my server. I've made videos about all of that in the past. In fact, my last video, my most recent video was about how to uh, restrict access to your home lab when you're using Cloudflare tunnels. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Again, I'll try to have links to everything in the description down below. So guys, I think with that said, that kind of wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this video. Again, the deploying, the, the managing, it's all very, very simple with this. Uh, so with that said, I wanna wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. That really does help quite a bit. Um, but I think with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up and I will talk to you guys in the next video.